always taking risks. I always think, if, if you're talking about music, I think Royal Court is punk. Well, the courts remain important because it, it, it always has been the engine room of, of new writing. And um, really great new writing, new plays are a really unique thing. They're like great albums, you know, um, or great films, or great novels. They're, they're very special, they're very, very difficult to create. They endure, um, and almost nobody knows how to do them. And the Royal Court are unique in the world in that they kind of know how to do it. The Royal Court Theatre in London has a long history of launching new playwrights. It's the playhouse that took a chance on John Osborne in 1956, initiating the so-called Angry Young Men School of Writing. Over the years, they've premiered groundbreaking works by artists such as Sarah Kane and Mark Ravenhill, and have been home to directors such as Stephen Daldry and Danny Boyle, gaining the theatre national and international significance. I think it has a ruthless commitment to new work and to risk taking. You know, they, they really actually do what they say on the tin, which a lot of places don't. You know, go out, find the writers, support the writers, chase the writers, you know, develop the writers into doing more work. There is also the, the awareness and the understanding that of the historical relevance of, of the Royal Court. You know, how it has been the, the launch pad for some pretty important writers and some important uh, works. And that's, you, you know, you, you sort of, in your dream list, you want to tick off the Royal Court. You come and see a play here and you know what's going on in the world. Just a great space to play. I get a, a, emotional getting out of the cab, looking up at the building because it was such a wonderful time here. It's the only theatre dedicated to new writing. I didn't just read that on the website. <laughs> that, that is what it is. I would say to my friends at the Royal Court, they treat their playwrights like rock stars. I mean, they really do. They nurture you from beginning till end. And throughout the whole process, I've really felt like I was valued, not just as the script writer, uh, as the playwright, but actually in putting the whole production together, rehearsals, all of that. Uh, I just I, I love the fact that it exists, um, and I think everyone who's into theatre, everyone who's interested in theatre, all that side of culture, um, owes it a debt really, or, or should be very very glad that it's here. Uh, and we need to not just this place, but just our our cultural place. We we need to look after them and cherish them definitely. When the artistic director of the theatre is saying this is the most important voice of the time, listen to this voice. That's when the Royal Court fires on every piston. Uh, when you feel the weight of the theatre behind somebody who they think is uniquely important to the culture at that moment. And then, even more important, they disseminate that person abroad. You know, it's, it's a programme of world writing and looking for writers outside England. And all the world writing festivals that they do here are just so important. New writing is celebrated, fashioned, crafted, where the idea of craft is maintained. Because I think those things are going, and there's a danger they will go. It's like uh, my home, in terms of, you say the word theatre, the Royal Court's my home. It, I, I guess it's where I found out who the hell I was. I realise that everything that's happened to me, this is the direct source of it all. It's an essential mouthpiece for uh, contemporary humanity and if we don't have new writers expressing what it is to be alive now in our current vocabulary uh, then we are a, a much poorer society. I think probably one of the reasons the Royal Court has been so important for the last 60 years um, is that phrase, I'm not quite sure who coined it or where it came from, but the idea of the right to fail. But it is about really, really endeavouring to try something and test something out and kind of be inventive and be bold. Um, and that sort of spirit of don't worry if it doesn't quite work, the main thing is the endeavour, I think is really, really important. Yeah.
but also I think it, they risk take here. You know, it's it's non-commercial. There's a lot of stuff here that you wouldn't, it would, it would never get seen in commercial theatre. You know, I mean, people are too afraid to take risks like that and put certain plays on. There's something in the Royal Court ethos, or from what I've gleaned from having seen so many plays here and been a part of the company, um, that is about work first. It doesn't feel elitist. It feels like the, the productions of theatre that's shown feels accessible to everybody. I feel like the Royal Court is like my theatre parent. I've always absolutely loved the, the um, manifesto of the right to fail um, um, because I think any good artistic endeavour has to begin with the, the, the idea of I don't know. <laughs> if the Royal Court didn't exist, a new writing in this country would be in a sorry state. It just feels like home. I've said that for years. Every time I come here, Sloan Square, I always feel this, this is like a second home to me. The amount of times I've been punched in the gut, have been pulled in, revulsed, knocked about, questioned my understanding of the world outside, both through a naturalistic prism or through a fantastic bit of poetic, through something amazingly visceral or something very light and delicate, through uh, an extraordinary addendum to the writing itself, whether it be an event, of great sound or lighting or design, and then this extraordinary, astonishing use of our language by the best actors, the newest actors, the most exciting actors we have. It'll, it'll be here in another 60 years, I don't know. When you look at theatre, it's a tradition that's always looking back. You know, we're always doing rehashes of Shakespeare's. We're always doing, you know, Chekhov, Ibsen, or Bernard Shaw. I think without the Royal Court, we wouldn't have this amazing flurry of plays about now, you know, for now plays that then become a part of that history. So there's not a single actor I know alive here in America anywhere who doesn't want to be here. It just means you're constantly searching for what's going to be happening next. Listening to what the 20 year olds are saying, listening to what the teenagers are saying, listen, being alert to what's happening culturally and being in advance of public taste. Sometimes it's going to mean you're going to empty the theatre actually. Sometimes it means you're going to put plays on that play to 30%, 40% and you need to hold your nerve and not worry about that. It's not about transferring plays to the West End, it's about allowing theatre to be serious and challenging and political and urgent. That's, it's, that's our job, that's the job. You've just got to hold the nerve and do that. And this can be a building that can define the next century.